main takeaway from the testimony yesterday? What did you think? Well, I think that uh, David Johnston was um, somewhat be bewildering in, in some of the answers that he gave. I'll go straight to one key point. He came up with a report eight days ago in which he affirmed that there's no case that he's been able to find where Mr. Trudeau or their ministers failed to act on any information regarding foreign intervention in our elections. Since that date, we found out that Aaron O'Toole was briefed by the, the uh, YCSIS about the Chinese government interference in his last campaign against Trudeau in 2021, that there was interference with him, there was a disinformation campaign, there was attacks, there was an attempt to help the Liberals and hurt the Conservatives. It's not plausible, Marcia, that the Liberals didn't know about that, because we know, because we've been told by his Chief of Staff, Katie Telford, that there's communications between CSIS and the other networks that gather information and the government, and that Mr. Trudeau reads everything. In response to that, David Johnston seemed out of place. He seemed to have trouble grasping what would had just been put forward. He almost seemed to be suggesting that Aaron O'Toole hadn't given him that information. O'Toole got it after uh, when he had met with O'Toole. This is not Aaron O'Toole's responsibility. David Johnson has filed a report that's based on hearsay, partial information provided by people who all work for Justin Trudeau. And there's no credibility in what he put forward last week when we hear what happened to Aaron O'Toole and that they did nothing about it and it wasn't in the report. So Mr. Johnson is now trying to hold up that report and saying, well, you're attacking my credibility. I know and I quite like David Johnson, but it pains me to watch him being used in this way because the only person in Canada who gets to decide whether what three quarters of Canadians want, a commission of inquiry actually gets to take place, that's Justin Trudeau. But right now he's using David Johnston as a shield and we saw Mr. Johnston play the game, game you know, in front of the, all of that commission yesterday for over three and a half hours, but it led nowhere. Anybody who cares about this realizes that his report he, is based on information that was never subject to a cross-examination. Nobody was put under oath. All of these people work for Mr. Trudeau or his government, and it's lacking in credibility. Mm. Let's stay away from Johnston for a second and talk about the credibility of the process. When Mr. Johnston was asked, but the lawyer who was there helping you put this together, she attended a fundraiser with Mr. Trudeau. She gave thousands upon thousands of dollars to the Liberal Party over the years, and yet she was the person advising you as to whether or not Trudeau had done anything wrong, and his answer was almost naive. It's, well, she's a very good lawyer, which I'm absolutely convinced she is, but he seems unaware of what it is to have an appearance of conflict of interest. He was at the Trudeau Foundation right up until the day Trudeau named him the special rapporteur. He doesn't think that that's a potential conflict or at least the appearance of a conflict of interest either. Forget about the cottage stuff and the scheme. I never had any problem with the notion of David Johnson being named to this job. I thought he was an extraordinary Canadian. But when we found out just that bit about the Trudeau Foundation, and the resignation of the CEO and all the people who stepped back when they realized that there had been an attempt by the Chinese Communist Party to use front people to give money to the Trudeau Foundation to curry favor with Trudeau. It was obvious he could no longer continue, but even then he wouldn't step back. So he, despite, yeah. He's saying he's he's been given a task, he's got this duty, he's gonna fulfill it, he's committed to it. Um, as you're talking, I can't help but think <clears throat> is. If he is he even wondering if he's out of his element? I know he's gonna he's saying he's gonna stay on. But where do we go now from here, Tom? Because there are going to be these public hearings that he is going to be leading. So what happens now out of yesterday? Where do we go with this? Great question, Marcia, and I think it's the key question. And I think we have to go right back to the only person who is responsible for taking the decision that three quarters of Canadians want which is the decision to hold a full commission of inquiry. doesn't mean you have to make public the recipe for gathering information of CSIS and other agencies, but it is fair to ask, well, what information do we have? How many people were targeted? It's been coming out drip by drip. So that's the key thing. Who, who decides at this point? I had the same sense as you that some of this was exceeding David Johnston's grasp at this time. And, and, and it was painful for me to see because I would love for somebody close to him to put their hand on his shoulder and say, step back, You're, you are being used, which is exactly what a majority of the members of parliament have asked him. Very politely, the NDP's motion that was put together 
was very deferential. And they, you know, they used terms like step aside and things like that. But what they were trying to say is, you can't do this. We need to have answers as to what happened in, with the Chinese Communist Party and its interference here in Canada. We need to know if there are other cases and you just can't do this job. And so the pressure should be now, uh, not on David Johnson, because like I say, he's being used by Mr. Trudeau as, as a shield. And so we've got to pierce that shield as Canadians who care about these issues and say, how do we get to the bottom of this? The only way to do that, Marcia, is with a full public inquiry.